Hello. Thank you so much for joining me for this yoga session. Hopefully you are doing well, staying safe. Um, if you're doing yoga, that means you're taking care of yourself. So we'll get started. Just make sure you've got enough room for a yoga mat. You've got the blocks. You've got a blanket if you need it. Also something to drink to wet your whistle. And I am just getting over a cold, so hopefully I won't lose it with coughing. So this uh, session will be pretty easy going. Um, won't be too difficult. Good stretch in order to just get the blood flowing a little bit through your body and get um, the muscles and the tendons and the joints and everything working the way they're supposed to, keeping them lubricated. So we'll start with finding that comfortable seat, letting your eyes close if that feels good to you. If not, you just have that slight gaze a few feet in front of you and you are letting your awareness come to your breath. And the more you bring your awareness to your breath, the more you keep practicing bringing your awareness to your breath, especially when your awareness goes somewhere else. That act is what helps to keep you connected to yourself, helps to center and ground in. And then from that awareness, you can rise and stretch. And you do this by treating yourself with kindness, compassion, and love. Practicing that on yourself. And if you can find kindness, compassion, and love for yourself, then you can find it for others. If you are seeking patience and grace, and find compassion and practice compassion for yourself. And the breath is coming in and out of your body. You're starting to do that three-part yoga breath where you fill up the lower third, then the middle third, then the upper third. And then release fully, upper, middle, lower. And let that three-part yoga breath help to keep you anchored in the present moment. You're not moving towards the future and you're not moving back towards the past. You're staying right where you're at. You're taking care of yourself. You're always learning new things about yourself and paying attention so you can adapt, keep yourself safe. Really feel yourself press down into your mat. Feel that connection to the floor, the building, the ground, the buildings built into and then the world that connects us all. And then feel yourself lift from that place. Stretch yourself into all that space around you that you are meant to take up. Let your breath be full and deep. Navel, ribs, chest. Exhale fully, chest, ribs, navel. Feel that engagement as you keep your awareness on your body and you're lifting with your front body, the navel lifting up, the heart lifting up, and then the back body is bearing down glutes and dimples down, your dimples down and your blades down for support. Inhaling and exhaling. 
Feel how that girdle engagement, the hip and the shoulder, how when you activate those sockets and those girdles, it holds you up and you're in a safe and protected way. Let your arms sweep up above your head. Keep those girdles engaged, pulling those hands down into your heart. So that's the lift of the front body and then a bearing down of the back body. And it takes a lot of awareness to feel that. But once you do, it's amazing. Inhaling and exhaling. And then you can pause, you can let yourself unwind from that seated position, let those knees fall side to side, letting that blood start to flow. Remember, you should never let your feet get tingly or try not to let your feet get tingly. Um, you might like, some people might like it. I don't like the tingle. Um, that cutting off of circulation. So make sure that you're always protecting yourself. Um, I don't think it seems very safe, but if some people might like the sensation because it causes a lot of sensation. All right, find yourself seated on your mat. We're just gonna do a nice, easy uh, forward fold, pressing through those heels. You're gonna hinge at your hips, really flex, those feet, keep those kneecaps pulled up into your thighs and then reach forward for that stretch down the back of your leg and then also probably down the back side of your body, breathing full and deep. Your chest does not have to be on your legs. Your legs don't have to be, you know, they, there can be a big bend in your knee, inhaling and exhaling. And then let yourself lift up and then once again, release the um, hold, the engagement and let yourself windshield wiper back and forth, inhaling and exhaling. And then find yourself just on your behind, um, your legs out in front of you so you've got a nice widish base and you can um, like they don't have to be really close they can be really out in front of you we're going to pick up that right leg right knee right hand left hand right foot and starting to do a little rocking back and forth I'm really pressing through that heel. It's starting at the glute is where I'm pressing down on the glute and then I'm pressing through the heel, keeping that shoulder girdle raised and letting that leg just start to um, rock back and forth, inhaling and exhaling. And I'm gonna put this block down on my left side. I'm gonna let my left hand go. I'm gonna put my left hand on the block and my right hand on that right foot and then start to do some circles, still keeping that glute pretty connected to the floor. Keep lifting your trunk. If it doesn't feel comfortable to have your hand at the foot, you can gently hold onto the back of the thigh or at the ankle. Inhale and exhale and then let the movement release, let the leg go down to the ground and just take a breath or two, notice how you feel. And then same thing, other side, make sure you feel comfortable on your uh, glutes, on your buns, and then pick up that other foot for some gentle rocking. Inhale and exhale. So this is your lifting your whole self up into the space around you. It takes a lot of energy to do that and it can be taxing. And um, especially I think when we move to the other way, when you um, bring that left hand, 
either on that left foot or somewhere behind that left knee, that le somewhere behind that left leg. But holding yourself up right here can be really taxing. That's why I want you to use whatever support. You're not putting weight on that back arm. Try to keep pressing that glute down. Let that leg move in whatever direction is feels good. And then let that go. Notice how you feel. Breathing full and deep. Inhaling and exhaling. And then take a moment. Seated, your legs come as close to you as feels good. Notice how you feel in the hips and underneath you, closest to the floor. Breathing full and deep and then bring those knees up to bring them over to the left. So the right knee and the left foot are not on top of each other they are stacked next to each other. And depending on your knee flexibility, you might want your legs closer or you might want them further away. So experiment with what feels good and then flex the feet. And then that back right leg, I just want you to gently thump it on the floor. It's a gentle movement. You are not putting a lot of weight on that left arm that's supporting you. My right hand is on my right hip and I am letting that leg just thump. The inside of the thigh is what is thumping against the floor. Inhale and exhale. I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna bring my knees back up and I'm gonna bring myself back into a cross-legged position and notice how my body feels. It just, it's amazing what that thumping does. It's moving the fascia around. So my right side, where I was just thumping the inside of that right thigh, it just feels more open. I hope you feel that. So now knees back up and then knees to the right. So same thing, other side. Remember, don't let that left knee and that right foot be on top of each other. They are next to each other. Your right arm is down on the floor or a block, but you're not putting any weight on the arm because you're holding yourself in your shoulder. And then you start that thumping the inside of the thigh, the leg. Remember, if this does not feel good in your body, do not do it. Inhaling and exhaling. This is not a harsh movement. This is just a gentle thumping with your leg. Breathing full and deep. Few more. And then let the movement go. Bring yourself back into that neutral position. Take a few moments. Notice how you feel. Breathing full and deep. And it's just amazing what that thumping does. Uh, it just opens and moves, I think, things into the right place. So take your time, bring yourself around onto your hands and knees. Make sure you're taking care of yourself with any drink. And press yourself back into that child. Your breath. And your awareness stay in your middle body, inhaling and exhaling. If it feels good to you to have your arms on those blocks, do that. If not, they're just reaching forward. You can also have your hands, um, they can make, you can stack them on top of each other and you can make a little pillow for your forehead, breathing full and deep. Walk your knees as wide apart as feels good so your body's got some place to come down in between and get that nice massage. And then after a few breaths, pick yourself up into your table. Hands right underneath your shoulders, knees right underneath your hips, and you're going to engage those girdles. So the lower girdle, you are tucking your tail and then you are untucking your tail and you're doing that a few times in order to feel how it moves and then 
tucking tends to be the supported place. You're pulling the tail down, you're pulling that navel up. And then you are pulling the blades together, pulling them apart, so you are activating that shoulder girdle. And then supported is pressing up through those blades, and then your cat and cow is right in your middle back. So that middle back is where I'm trying to get you to concentrate to put more of the movement, the apex of the movement. I'm trying to get you to protect your hyper um, mobile lower back and your hyper uh, mobile upper back. So you're where, where the girdles that right where the girdles are, the neck area. So you are protecting those really hyper mobile areas and putting more of the movement in that middle, uh, that middle rib cage area, not putting hardly any weight on your arms because you're holding yourself in your trunk. And then let yourself pause to let go of engagement, especially with those arms resting back in that child, so you can get that rest. I think rest is just as important as the movement. So inhaling and exhaling, staying with your breath. And then take time coming up into that table position and sending that right leg back. Make sure you've got room behind you. Sending that right leg back. Keep those hips square. Keep that right ball of your foot on the ground. And you are um, just gently rocking back and forth um, over your hands and back. You feel your whole body move. Inhale and exhale. And then after a few rocks, pause so you feel even on both hands, your left knee and your right foot. So feel even, find that place of evenness between all four of those points. And then let that right leg start to float up. Keep those hips square so your whole front body square to the floor. And only if you wanna challenge yourself, do you lift that opposite limb. You keep the shoulder engaged as you lift the limb, inhaling and exhaling. And then bring that left arm down, bring that right foot down over to the left side. You've got the ball of the foot back on the floor and then keep those hips square to the floor as you look gently over that left shoulder. Inhale and exhale. And then let yourself release back down into a child, letting the strain, uh, the weight come off that right hand. And even if you're holding yourself in your trunk, you might feel it in your wrist, you might feel it in the palm of your hand. You're always being kind and gentle with yourself. Breathing full and deep, navel, ribs, chest. Exhaling fully, chest, ribs, navel. And then up into that table, make sure that you find that stable table. Doing that tuck of your tail and pressing through those blades, send that left leg back, keep the ball down. So it's your toes are getting a stretch, but you're pressing back towards the ball of your foot. And then you are rocking over those hands. Keep those shoulders out of your ears. Pay attention to us, your head dangling down to the floor. You want to keep pulling it towards the wall in front of you. And then pause. Find that place of support underneath that right arm, that left arm, starting at the shoulder. And then right knee, left foot, starting at both glutes. And then let that left leg float up. And then only if it serves you, let that opposite limb keep the shoulder girdle engaged. You are still really trying to get not, not only long, but wide. Inhale and exhale. And then bring it down to rest. Oh, I forgot. You bring that right hand down and then you bring that left leg over to the right. 
and then you look over the right shoulder. I almost forgot, but then I remembered. All right, let yourself then come down and rest in that child, taking that complete break up off those arms, gently winding those wrist joints, staying with that breath. Inhaling and exhaling. If you want to press up into a downward dog, take time to do that. Otherwise, stay in your table, your active table, or come into your child. If you're in your downward dog, you are moving as much or as little as feels good, trying to find the balls of your feet, your heels are really heavy. Inhaling and exhaling, stay with that breath. And then if you did come into the dog, you're going to come back down to your knees. This isn't going to be a flow class, so we're going to bring that, we're going to, with our knees down, we're going to bring that right foot up between your um, hands or your blocks. Doesn't matter how many steps it takes to do that, but pay attention to where that right foot is, it should be right um, behind, right in front of the ankle. So make sure that you can feel your whole foot on the ground. That left knee is right underneath your left hip. And then let yourself lift into that upright position. Keep trying to square those hips. And here's where if your knee really does bother you, make sure that you bring cushions. See if that helps with you being in the pose um, for a little bit longer. Your hands can make their way to your heart or your hips, or if you want to reach up over your head, you totally can do that. Inhaling and exhaling. Hands are going to come to the heart and we're going to twist towards that right leg, so that left elbow comes to either the top of that right leg or you reach beyond that right leg in that prayer position. You can also bring that left hand down to the floor or a block and then just let that right arm reach towards the um, where your tail would be. And then you are keeping the navel towards the ground and then rotating the heart to the right, whether you're in that prayer twist or in that hand down, uh, a reach for a tail twist, inhale and exhale. And then whatever you're doing, you're going to release, bringing both hands down, make sure that you feel supported. This is why I love blocks because they bring the floor up. I'm going to uh, send that back lower leg to the long side of my space and move so that hip and that knee stay right underneath and then move that right leg out so I am now in that knee down warrior two position breathing full and deep you're looking over your right arm or wherever feels comfortable try to stay upright feel that connection between the inside of your right knee and your left hip flexor right where I have my hands feel yourself pull them apart make sure the ball of the right foot is um, down in the floor as well as the heel and then let yourself hinge a little bit into that knee down side angle you can even bring a block and rest that right arm as you lift that left or you're just resting that right elbow as you lift that left inhaling and exhaling staying with your breath your deep breaths and then lift yourself up into that upright position let that right leg come out a little bit longer now so it's not bent make you can always curl those back left toes and then let yourself hinge into that knee down triangle. St stay with that lifting from that center, pressing down from the center, 
and then lift yourself. Make sure you've got the space to move that right leg back into um, next to the left knee and then press yourself back into that child or press up into a downward dog if you want. It does not matter. Inhaling and exhaling. Breathing full and deep. I need to double up my blanket. It does get, um, and I'm going to turn so I stay to face you. That knee, I those knee down warriors are so good. And if you are not doing them because it really, really hurts your knee, if you can get, if, you, if it doesn't hurt with the cushion, then take time to bring the cushion down because it makes all the difference. That left leg comes forward now. We're coming into that knee down crescent where you're pressing into that right knee right underneath your right hip. Keep pulling both those glutes down. Keep lifting that front body. Remember to feel your ball and your heel of that left foot. You're doing whatever feels good. So you're stabilizing right here. This is where you're stabilizing your body. Your hips, your lower girdle, you're lifting that navel, that pubic bone and that navel is coming up and your dimples and crack are going down in order to protect you. That both those things are happening in order to stabilize you. The basically the same thing's happening in the upper body too. Heart, navel and heart lift and then blades and dimples bear down. So your hands come wherever, if you like that prayer twist, you bring that right elbow to the top of that left knee or past that left knee, or you bring that right arm down to the floor or block. Keep the navel pointing to the floor and then just let that chest, that, right, that left boob, that left breast, that left chest, that pec open to the left. Your hand is going somewhere close to where your tail is. That's as far as you ever have to go. Inhaling and exhaling, and then you are unwinding. Use the blocks, use your hands on the floor in order to be supported as you now let that lower leg, it comes now towards the long edge and you open yourself to the long edge coming into that knee down warrior two inhaling and exhaling stay with your breath all right we came into the knee down side angle remember use your support your props inhaling and exhaling staying with your breath trying to rotate the whole front body up to the sky. All right, lift. Now remember, you can always use your hands on the floor, especially if you need it to help with lengthening that leg out of it's your hip. Make sure you're not hurting that kneecap, always pulling that knee up into that socket, that or that knee socket, I don't know if that's a knee socket, that kneecap, pulling that knee up into your thigh. Inhaling and exhaling. I keep thinking I missed something, but I don't think I did. I think this is what we did. All right, then we did that knee down triangle. And then you came around and pressed yourself back into the child. Or maybe you went to a downward dog. It really doesn't matter how you reset. Just take a few moments to do that. Inhaling and exhaling. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Always taking those drinks as you need them. All right, we're going to come into an easy squat pose. This does not have to be super difficult, but it should be, you should feel sensation because that means that you're doing some work and, um, and that you are getting that blood flowing and the uh, muscle working, but don't, you don't have to like knock yourself out. So you don't have to be super low. You need to be somewhere where your whole foot is on the floor and 
um, in order for me to feel really comfortable, um, really low, I gotta move those hips open by pressing my knees back and then settling in between. You can use blocks, a chair, whatever in order to support you as you are heavy in those heels sitting yourself back and then keep lifting that upper body so you're practicing um, that squat putting that weight on that back body um, it's not your toes it's not even it's it's somewhere between the balls and the heels and you are supporting yourself with those balls and heels not the toes the toes really hardly ever do any work. And wherever you're at, you're gonna take a couple more breaths, inhale and exhale. Wherever you're at, you're gonna bring that right arm down, keep that navel to the front of your space and then open up that left side. You only have to reach as far as your tail. Bring yourself back through center, same thing. You only have to reach as far as your tail. And then bring yourself back to really put that weight in your back body to come up into a standing position. And then find yourself standing on two feet, moving as much or as little as feels good. Hands down to your sides on your body doesn't matter, inhaling and exhaling. Notice what it feels like to be standing on those two feet. Find your weight somewhere between the balls and the heels so you are really trying to press down into the floor with the balls of your feet. Lift your digits and spread them wide and then bring them forward for a gentle grip on the mat. Seriously, those toes do no work. Kneecaps up into thighs. And then this is where you engage that lower girdle where you drop that back body and lift that front body in order to, it's a muscle and framework engagement, activation, everything's happening at the same time. Navel, dimples down, solid base. You are holding yourself and supporting yourself. And then navel, dimples up. You are floating above your body. Keep lifting that heart. Keep trying to bring those blades down. They're not squeezing together, but they are active. And you feel this general pressure on the tops of your shoulders. You reach those hands down by your sides. You're re pressing the crown of your head up to the sky and you are dropping that tail down to the floor and this is mountain try to practice this pose wherever you can if you are standing in line if you are at your desk and you've got one of those standing desks if you stand at your job notice if you can stand this way especially hopefully you've got shoes where you can move your toes <coughs> excuse me also um, while you're washing dishes, I don't know if I said that, while you're, you know, just doing chores around the house, you are in mountain, in here, and everything is moving off of mountain. We're going to come into a uh, standing tree, and uh, you can even come next to a wall. I love to use a wall for support. Take your time. I came off the mat, too. I sometimes find that I can get a better feel of support um, off the mat. And that's one of those things where you got to play around and figure out what works for you. So I'm going to bring uh, my hand that's closest to the wall, and that's the leg that is going to be balanced on first, but I am pressing down evenly from that lower girdle down, and I'm staying with that as I lift that left leg. So my right leg is what is supporting me. I brought that left foot above my right knee. Hands can be wherever, just gently on the wall or the chair or you're practicing your balance. Inhale and exhale, stay with that breath. You're engaging that framework of your lower girdle, especially to help keep you in that place of support. This is a great big hip opener. You don't have to have your foot as high as me. 
You can have it down below your knee, never on your knee. Inhale and exhale. And then take your time as you come out, bringing that foot down next to the other one and notice how you feel. Notice if one side feels more energetic than the other side. Mine does. I'm actually going to walk over to the other side. I find it to be it's safe and supported if you are supporting yourself right next to the wall and then the side that you are moving is the side away from the wall. You can decide it's easier to do it the other way. It's just this way I don't bop this knee into the wall. All right, inhaling and exhaling, breathing full and deep. You can use that wall pretty much. I like to just use the elbow sometimes. Really breathing full and deep. Keep lifting that heart. Inhaling and exhaling, staying with your breath. Both legs still active, still got that pelvis tilted and engaged. I am not hyperextending the kneecap of the leg that I am standing on, and I am trying to open those hips. Inhaling and exhaling, and then take your time. Bring yourself back to standing on two feet. Take a few moments. Notice how you feel. Move. Stand still, a combination, notice how you feel. Breathing full and deep. And then to the back of your space. Oh wait, I wanted to do um, a goddess squat before we came down. So turning towards the long edge of your space, turn those Heels in, let those toes go out and really engage in that trunk. I'm going to turn to the side just so you can see. I'm not letting that uh, tail stick out. I'm really pulling it down and I am pulling those hip flexors up in order to have that place of support and then settling in to still find that place on those balls and those heels not those toes. If your arms are not liking that reach up then have your hands at your heart or at your hips and let those bodies come down in between really press evenly through those legs keep lifting that front body inhale and exhale and then press and reach and then walk those legs back in I could really feel that this class wasn't as probably as gentle as I thought it was going to be um, if you're feeling it it's because we've really been working some stuff but that should hopefully feel good. Um, we're going to come down onto uh, the belly. You can get there however feels good. I'm going to walk down and then come from that downward dog, pausing in that dog. You can come right to your knees or from that downward dog to your knees to come forward onto the stomach and then let those knees, windshield wiper, you can make a pillow for your head, inhaling and exhaling. But this, in this laying down position on your stomach, and you might be thinking, oh good, we can take a break here. But I still want you to try to activate that front body and lift it up. And I want you to try to activate that back body and press it down so you've got that place of support. Really let those legs be heavy behind you and walk them in so they're pretty close together. Hands come underneath your shoulders looking down towards the mat. The only thing that's up is your collarbone. Really activate, pull those elbows out of your ears and breathe full and deep and then lift baby cobra. You can now turn one cheek, lift baby cobra, turn the other cheek a couple times. And then pause, bring those elbows underneath those shoulders, prop yourself up, let your legs be as wide as feels good. That lower body is still really heavy. And let that heart pull through those biceps, inhaling and exhaling. Breathing full and deep. Now, if you wanna do a quad stretch, 
That right arm is what you are gently leaning against as you bend that left leg and then reach back with that left arm. You're not straining any of your joints in order to reach that thigh or that foot, that thigh, that foot. Inhale and exhale. Stay lifted. Bring that opposite elbow and then reach for that opposite foot. Try not to strain. Inhaling and exhaling, staying with your breath and your body. And then you can release windshield wiper, wiggle, rock, whatever feels good. Hands underneath those shoulders. Lift yourself up coming into that table. I think it feels amazing to move through those cat and cows. Remember to have those girdles active and engaged. I like to be pressing up into that cat and then stay in that cat as I come back into a child. And it just brings uh, some space in that back body, right between those vertebrae. Breathing full and deep, navel, ribs, chest. Exhaling fully, chest, ribs, navel. And then finding yourself on your back. Take your time. I'm going to stop and have a quick little sip of drink. Pretty good. I haven't really wanted to cough. So that is, that means I, I am healing. I'm on the um, better end of it here. All right, find yourself on your back. Keep those feet on the ground to start with, especially if you feel not really supported in that low back. You have to really, I at least have to really press my back body down into the floor and at the same time lift that front body. And it takes a lot of awareness and energy. I'm assuming everyone has to do that. All right. Um, I keeping that those glutes down. I pick up those feet and I rock and I circle. If that does not feel good to you, keep those feet on the ground. Inhaling and exhaling. Eventually, you're going to be done with the movement. Try to really spread yourself out wide on the mat. Really try to bring those shoulders down into the floor as well as those glutes, just the blades and the part of the back and the shoulders closest to the floor. That right ankle can come to the top of that left thigh, that left knee. Keep that right glute on the floor. Pick, you can pick up that left foot if you can keep that right glute on the floor. If you want more of a stretch, if it feels good to you to reach through that opening with your right hand. Now, if you can't quite get to the thigh, you can lift up, but then bring yourself back down and keep trying to press that right glute into the floor. Breathing full and deep, navel, ribs, chest. Exhaling fully, chest, ribs, navel. Never straining, never hurting any delicate joints. Your fingers are always protected. You're not pulling very hard behind that leg because there's delicate tendons behind that knee. Inhale, like this is a great place to use a strap or a towel. All right, that left foot can come back down. That right foot can come down next to it. You can move however feels good. And then same thing, other side. Keep that left glute down. Left ankle on top of that right knee, that right thigh. Really press that left side away. You're doing that from the inside. It's all happening from the inside as you activate that girdle. You never have to go any further because that is quite a bit. Keep those glutes on the floor. If you do lift up, you come back down and you breathe full and deep. Navel, ribs, chest. Exhale fully. Chest, ribs, navel.
taking time, coming down, releasing, letting yourself move however feels good to you in order to reset. Arms come out to the side. Bring those feet however close to you you'd like and let those knees fall to the left. Keep that right shoulder connected to the floor. Your gaze is wherever feels good. Inhaling and exhaling. And then you've got that right arm to the right, that left arm to the left. You're going to bring that right arm up and bring it on top of the left and you are rolling onto your left side and then unwind. So move back and forth, opening and closing with that right arm. The next time you find that right hand on top of that left hand, then let that right arm, keeping the hand pretty close to the floor, start to make a big circle up and around. And if you want to pause and let that shoulder open, you're protecting your joints, inhaling and exhaling. You're moving as much as feels good or pausing wherever feels good and breathing. And then whatever you are doing, whether you bring it around and then bring it on top and then once again, open up. Inhaling and exhaling, and then bring yourself back through center. Take a moment. Make sure that you feel um, steady on your whole back. So feel both blades, both dimples. Bring those legs over to the right. That left arm is down on your left. Your right arm is down on your right shoulder height. Inhaling and exhaling. And then start to bring that left arm up and over. And then you can do that great big stretch. Your left hand is on top of your right arm, your right hand. And then you start to let that arm move around. And then that stretch is at your underarm. Oh my gosh, I think that feels amazing. I'm not letting my elbow be um, in an unsafe place. I'm not letting my hands be in an unsafe place. Inhaling and exhaling. I'm letting that arm travel all the way down. And then opening back up, taking a breath, and then finding myself back on that neutral back, rocking circling, whatever feels good, maybe just a few windshield wipers. It really is whatever feels good. It could be a combination of all that stuff. And if you've got time now to sit in uh, meditation or to lay in relaxation, please do that. Take five, eight, ten minutes to let your body integrate all of that work we've done in this session. And I hope that you can do that. And until next time, namaste. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a good one.